G'day, Chris here. Welcome back to ClickSpring. With the frames and pillars completed, it's time to finish the frame assembly by making the washers and screws. The washers are as you'd expect, a simple disc, but with an ornamental groove around the edge. I need five like this, and then an additional one with a countersink, making six in total. It's a fairly straightforward piece of turning, and I found it easiest to turn them all in the one sitting. Wilding recommends in his construction manual that they have a slight undercut at the centre of the underside surface so that they seat well on the plates. To do that I turned up a quick cement chuck on the small lathe bonded the washers on with a little super glue and then set up for a very light taper cut, just a few degrees. and then I took a facing cut across the underside of the washer. A little bit of heat breaks the superglue bond. And now the washers have a slightly concave base and should sit nice and snug at the perimeter. So with the washers complete, it's time to take a look at the screws. The clock has five of these large flathead screws, which are kind of a nice visual feature, all made from mild steel. Again, a fairly straightforward turning job. First, I roughed out the shape. Then I undercut the head. And finally I used a die to cut the thread. I parted them off just a little bit over length to leave a bit of metal for finishing. So next up I need to put a screwdriver slot across that top face and I figured the best way to do it was to use a slitting saw on the mill. And for once that little tip left over from parting off came in quite handy. I used it to line up the saw blade with the centre of the screw. At this point the screw form is basically complete, it just needs to be brought to final dimension and then polished. So it's back to the small lathe for the final operations. Off camera I turned up this little filing guide to help me keep the edges of the screws square during sanding and polishing. And here I'm making a start on those edges using fine grit emery paper stuck onto a brass polisher with adhesive.
This is a tailstock polishing tool I've made for my small lathe. I've tried to emulate the classic screw head polishing tool used by watchmakers. I've made discs of both brass and soft steel. Emery paper and wood can be fixed on with adhesive, or the metal discs can be used directly with various grinding and polishing pastes. The lap aligns nicely with the surface of the screw head and can be lightly rotated to bring a fresh cutting surface to bear on the work. But I found that under power it's a bit too aggressive and it probably causes more problems than it solves. Operated by hand though with a reasonably fine grip and it does a great job. In this case I'm using a 3000 grit disc of emery paper on the steel disc. and after just a few strokes it leaves the surface in quite good shape to start the polishing. Now I plan to do the polishing with diamantine powder and I must confess I haven't had much success with it so far. I can get it to polish but I always seem to get these little scratches that ruin the finish. So with these screws I was determined to sort out what was going wrong. I figured I'd try out different polish consistencies and a few other things and see what I could pick up. So first up I tried a fairly wet mix on a soft wood lap. Most of the texts also make mention of a putty consistency to the polish, so I tried that too. In both cases the polish cut ok, but I could see that the wood I'd chosen was less than ideal. It's too soft and slightly rounding the edges of the screw, which I definitely don't want. And I had moderate success with the edges, just using this simple oak polisher. But eventually though, I hit the same snag which put me off last time. The surface was polishing but I was picking up some nasty scratches too. And by the size of them they weren't being made by the polish. It looked like contamination of the lap or maybe the paste. It was clear I had to make some changes to what I was doing. So first of all I went back one step to remove the scratches with the emery paper. And then I resurfaced the wooden disc. I tried out a few different types of wood but I found MDF had an immediate positive effect and also I charged it with a lot less polish. I got a bit more serious about cleanliness, covering up the paste after mixing and cleaning the work thoroughly after each step. And finally I disconnected the lathe belt, which allowed me to back right off on the pressure and to better mimic the action of the classic watchmaker's tool. Now I know the results are far from perfect, but the deep scratching problem all but disappeared and for the first time I was starting to see the surface pop out the way I'd read in books. It's a huge improvement on my previous efforts with Diamantine and at least now I know what I'm aiming for. Anyway with that little adventure behind me, I blued the screws to finish them off. And now it's time to have a bit of fun and see what it all looks like so far. I've got to admit it's kind of motivating being able to see the clock start to take shape. That's it for this week. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. In the next video, I get started on the wheel cutting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.